I will now call this meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order. I welcome all of those who are in attendance tonight for, to, for the meeting and also those that are viewing them on uh, G10 television. Uh, to, be, to begin with, uh, we're going to have the Pledge of Allegiance being led by Council Member Bob Warden, followed by the invocation by our City Attorney John Carter. Please rise. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our Heavenly Father, we pause this evening to give you thanks. To give you thanks for all the blessings and benefits that you so graciously bestow upon us individually and upon us collectively as the city of Jacksonville. As we enter the month of September and October, two months that are always problematic to us as far as weather, when we're looking at possible storms and hurricanes, we pray for your protection. We pray that you would be with us and deliver us from severe weather during this time period. We pray for all of our leaders throughout the world. We pray for peace. We pray for Syria and Egypt and all the conflicts there and for those, those persons. And as always, we pray for our, pray for our military. And we pray for their families, that your protection would be with them. We ask your guidance and direction as always to be with our mayor and with our council. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Council, you have a copy of the, adopt, uh, the agenda and the consent mm -hmm. items for tonight's meeting. I would entertain a motion to adopt. Approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Next, we have the approval of the minutes for the August 20th, 2013 special workshop meeting and the August 20th, 2013 regular meeting. Mayor, move approval of the meetings with the special workshop meeting minutes for August 20th and regular meeting for August 20th. Second. A motion and second. Any discussion? Hear none. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? This is a portion of the meeting where we uh, do pro uh, presentations, and I only have one tonight, but I'd like to ask Ms. Rebecca Basin, who is the Public Information Specialist with Coastal Care, if she would join me up front, please. Coastal Care, a local government agency that provides access and oversight of services for mental health, intellectual development, disabilities, and substance abuse in Brunswick, Carteret, New Hanover, Onslow, and Penner counties has requested a proclamation naming the month of September as Recovery Month in the city of Jacksonville. And I will read the following proclamation. Whereas addiction and mental illnesses are diseases and mental health is an essential part of overall wellness, prevention of substance use disorders works an effective treatment can help people recover from alcohol and drug addiction and mental health disorders. And whereas the benefits of preventing and overcoming substance use and or mental health disorders are vital to individuals, families, and the community at large. And whereas more than 20 million Americans are dependent on illicit drugs and or alcohol according to the 2011 National Survey on Drug Use and Health, and one in five Americans will experience a mental health issue this year. And whereas the cost of untreated and mistreated mental illness and addictive disorders to American businesses, governments, and families has grown to over $100 billion annually. And whereas community-based services that respond to the needs of the individual and family are cost-effective and beneficial. And whereas 
Recovery Month is observed every September nationwide by advocacy organizations to raise awareness and understanding of issues related to substance use and mental health disorders and to eliminate the stigma associated with seeking services. Now therefore I, Sammy Phillips, Mayor of the City of Jacksonville, do hereby proudly proclaim September 2013 as Recovery Month in the City of Jacksonville and call upon our community to recommit to increasing awareness and understanding of mental illness and the need for accessible services for all people who suffer from mental disorders. And Ms. Basin, who is the Executive or Public Information Specialist uh, with Coastal Care, is here to, to accept this proclamation. And I think you have a few words to say about an upcoming event also. Thank you. Hi, I'm Coastal Care in partnership with NAMI, which is National Alliance for Mental Illness and um, Coastal Coalition for Substance Use and a couple of the organizations in Onslow County are hosting a first annual um, recovery celebration in downtown Jacksonville by the trolley. And um, we're gonna have a food vendor out there. We're gonna have some um, vendors with some resources. We're gonna have some music and some people talking about their personal recovery and, and the process they went through. It's gonna be on Saturday the 14th. It's on um, from 10 to one. We're gonna have a food vendor come out, get your lunch, bring a chair, bring a blanket, bring your family and come out and celebrate recovery with the statistics of one in four or one in five people in the nation with, self with recovery issues. Um, chances are somebody in here knows someone or themselves are in recovery. So come out and celebrate with us. Thank you. Rebecca. Thank you. takes us to agenda item number one on tonight's uh, agenda and this will be for a conditional use permit and site plan for Jacksonville VA outpatient clinic at 4006 Henderson Drive at this time I'll recess the regular City Council meeting and open up uh, the public hearing in this matter you swear that the information you're about to give is the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you go Yes, sir, I do. All right, this is Jerry Mee Smith. He's one of our senior planners for the city of Jacksonville. who will be presenting this. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. Yeah, before you, agenda item number one, a conditional use permit and site plan for the Jacksonville VA outpatient clinic. The proposed location is 4006 Henderson Drive. Parker and Associates has submitted this conditional use permit and site plan application for a 10,731 square foot facility. Uh, while it will be home to the Jacksonville VA clinic, it could be other uses in the future if they were to leave that these uses are identified in exhibits A and C of your agenda item. You'll note the uh, vicinity location map before you. This is aerial photography of the site located on Henderson Drive just south of the Gold's Gym and north of Wells Fargo Financial. Mm -hmm. the, again, the property is zoned conditional use B1, therefore it does require consideration of the Planning Advisory Board in your approval or other words, uh, decision. Across the road to Henderson Drive is zoning that is B1 with conditional use business one zoning to the north and south and to the rear of the property is zoning that is O and I. Before you on the screen and in your agenda is the site plan for the VA outpatient clinic. The planning advisory board heard this request on at their August 12th meeting. They recommended approval. Staff is also recommending approval with two conditions noted in your staff report. Since the planning board staff has spoken with Mr. Parker uh, regarding the second condition, the fencing between Gold's Gym and this site, and uh, staff agrees with a with his discussion and adding an, another option to that condition to require a six foot opaque fence or vegetative increased vegetative buffer. Working with the uh, staff of the Public Safety de de Department. Again, we are recommending approval with findings of fact A through G being found in the affirmative and the two, con two conditions mentioned in the staff report with the addendum that I just spoke of. 
Council, any questions of Mr. Smith? Jeremy, why are we why are we recommending buffering between two businesses? Well, there is um, there, we already have our four foot required perimeter buffering, which is a tree shrub rate. Um, in the, in discussion with public safety, there was concern that with the ten, tendency of Gold's Gym to have a, a considerable more parking than their facility can handle, there was a concern that there may be overflow parking onto this adjacent property, and there's an intent to not allow that parking to take advantage of the VA outpatient clinic. And if you put the increased buffer or a fence, that would prevent them from making a cross connection via pedestrian walking or whatever. Any other questions? Thank you. This is a public hearing in this matter. Is there any but one present who wishes to speak further? Parker. Swear the information you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you out. I do. John Parker, 306 New Bridge Street. Um, also here tonight is Mr. Sam Sasser from uh, Construction Managers. He is one of the owners, in case there are some questions that council may have. Uh, to add a little more information uh, to the separation between us and the neighbor to the left. Um, this is a lead project. Mr. Sasser is hoping for a silver lead certification on this. And something that I didn't know, uh, fences actually can deduct points. So uh, we came back, talked to the chief today about putting in some prickly type vegetation, something that would keep people from passing through, uh, but would not deduct from the uh, lead points. And as you probably know, adding more vegetation, particularly vegetation that doesn't require watering and lots of maintenance and so forth, uh, increases points. So we can, uh, we can take away the fence, uh, provide the vegetation, not deduct points, you actually gain a few points uh, as far as putting in additional vegetation to separate us from the neighbor. Uh, one thing that uh, planning board asked the question, I didn't have an answer. Uh, you, if you've looked at the plan, you see that the left driveway has a little twist to it. That is to maintain, one of the reasons for conditional use zoning out here was to control driveway access to Henderson Drive. Uh, that is to maintain that separation between us and the Gold's Gym driveway. And we have a fire hydrant sitting right there to the side of that, so we didn't want to have to move that fire hydrant. They get to be fairly expensive. And it still functions uh, adequately to serve the site. Uh, this is a much wanted, needed, and long-awaited facility for our area, and uh, we hope that you look favorably upon the request to approve it. Be glad to try to answer any questions that council may have right now. And again, Mr. Sasser is here if there's any questions. Mr. Parker, about how many um, parking spaces will be um, accessible by the patients that will be utilizing this clinic? Good question. Do you have that information? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, total number of parking is 60, and of those, seven are handicapped. Okay. You indicated that, I guess, to the left of the perimeter that you were going to put, there was going to be vegetation in between Gold's Gym and the clinic, correct? Is there anything that's going to be to the right of that perimeter in between the right side of the clinic and Wells Fargo as well? For now, we'll we are reserving all of the current vegetation, which is a wooded strip. There is a four foot perimeter lawn that is required by your zoning ordinance. Uh, and uh, we put plantings in that four foot strip on that side. But the reason for beefing up the other is so that we pro prohibit pedestrian movement. So people don't walk through there. So we'll provide the four foot buffering and the plantings that are required on the the right side, but on the left side, we would we would really thoroughly beef that up. And um, this will be my last question. And if this clinic is utilized the way that it should be, will there be any future use to add additional parking spaces, or are you just limit it to the number you have now? Good question. Uh, if you look to the back and to the right side, we have space reserved there. Uh, the building has the capability of be, it being extended to the back and then parking can be placed further to the left and to the right to accommodate uh, that expansion in the future. 
So there is space being reserved. That's one reason this site is as large as it is. Starting out with the 10731 building and then an ability to expand it, both building and parking at some time in the future. Thank you. Any other questions of Mr. Parker? Just want to tell them we've missed them. <laughs> I we missed you too. Seen them in a long time. <laughs> uh, did your client, Mr. Sasser, want to make any comments? Um, I have to. You have to be sworn if you do. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Okay. You want to say? R rules Thank are, you. Rules are rules. Rule. Yeah. You swear the information you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you go. Yes, uh, my name is Sam Sasser, and um, I reside at 1379 Davis Mill Road, Fremont, North Carolina. Um, I know this is a very long-awaited project. We're very proud um, to be able to build this facility here in the city of Jacksonville. And, and I offer, if any questions here or any thoughts of what you think is going to be of the building or, or the future, um, please do. Um, it is identically to the facility that we just completed in Goldsboro. Mm. So um, it's, it's a beautiful building. Well, thank you. We, sh we sure appreciate your interest in our community. Yeah. Any questions of Mr. Sasser, Council? Thank you, sir. Okay. Anyone else? At right, this time, I'm going to close the public hearing in this matter and reconvene the regular City Council meeting. Council, you're being asked to. Uh, hello? Uh, <laughs> To approve the uh, conditional use permit and site plan. Mayor Phillips, I'll move that the um, council approve the conditional use permitted site plan based on findings of fact A through G being found in the affirmative with the conditions identified in the staff report. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Were we not going to consider modifying the fence requirement? That's part of the recommendation, isn't it? I think it's that a condition. It'd be a third part, third condition. they would be adding that condition we would, to modify the second condition. It, it would be adding an or. A, That's a, fine. A, yeah. Is that your motion? Yes. Who was the second? Me. Second. Okay. Any further Thank discussion? You. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Okay. Uh, it brings us to uh, agenda item number two. And this is a public hearing for extraterritorial jurisdiction boundary amendment, uh, reduction for eight areas throughout Jacksonville. And senior or planning administrator Ryan King will be presenting this item. Ryan. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Tonight, before you, we have eight areas that we would like to present to the Council to consider removal from the city's extraterritorial jurisdiction, or ETJ for short. That is 2,276 parcels. Uh, these parcels were selected uh, for several reasons, some of which being we were splitting subdivisions, some we had recognized we don't see ourselves annexing the areas, for example, the Rain Tree and Deerfield area where we brought before council a few years ago a proposal to annex the area. And then with the recent annexation laws changing, we thought that would be a good area to come out. Um, There's some other areas where in just simply splitting the subdivision in half, and I'll go through those areas here in just a moment. Um, city staff work closely with county staff. As such, uh, we work jointly to send out letters to all 2,276 property owners four weeks before this meeting took place tonight. Uh, the county then posted their uh, requirements via a half-page newspaper ad um, because they will consider this request tomorrow night should council uh, remove these areas from the ETJ. Tomorrow night, the county commissioners here in this room will consider assigning countywide zoning to these areas. Uh, the county has 60 days to adopt zoning should city council remove these areas, so the city zoning would stay in place uh, for 60 days or until the county adopts zoning, whichever comes first. Uh, we've met with county staff to kind of talk about the transition, and we think we've got a good plan in place. And with that being said, we'll go over the areas. Um, as you can see before you on the screen, there's eight areas. Uh, some places, like for example, in set four up here at the top of the screen, you could potentially say, well, that's two or three different areas, just depending on how you want to basically um, identify the areas. So the first area we would basically use, per the statutes, identifiable land features. Uh, I guess my pen's not going to work tonight. Um, such as creeks, streams, parcel boundaries, transmission lines, roadways. So being this is the southwest area of town, we would actually... Um, 
pull the ETJ line up to follow the Southwest Creek. So on the screen before you, the dash line is the current ETJ. We would back that up to the new ETJ boundary, which is the green area. In all of these scenarios, it's simply reducing the ETJ area. Other than that, we're not modifying it. Uh, the second area is a small area right near the Food Line Shopping Center, the Plum Point Plaza Shopping Center at the Air Station main gate. As you can see, this area here was one subdivision, uh, and it basically, in 2003, when we did the expansion, the area was basically, we had to follow the uh, one-mile boundary requirements that we had to go out. We couldn't go no further than one mile, and we wanted to follow those identifiable features, and we couldn't go and take the whole neighborhood in. We took half of it. Now we're basically proposing that we come out of this area. Uh, the third area is the Oakhurst Estates area. Uh, the majority of this large tract of land is directly abutting the New River and is basically a conservative area that's been donated to the state conservative agency, I believe is the, the property owner. Um, as you can see here, there was just a small area on it's not going to work. So um, that was basically developed. Uh, this particular area was actually approved by the county and then platted when the city in the city's jurisdiction followed those county-wide approvals. Uh, the next area is a small area on Ramsey Road. Uh, this is actually, ironically enough, the county's transfer station. So if you want to take your recycled goods or those that may not have uh, municipal trash service or the, uh, one of the private services that are offered in the county, you can take your um, refuse here. Uh, the other area here is, um, this is the area closest to Hunter's Creek, the schools, a dockside. Um, and this is probably the, one of the largest, I think this is the second largest area that's coming out of the area, uh, or at least in the proposed reduction area. Um, the next area is, um, you can see we, we also cut this neighborhood in half by simply getting the lots that immediately abutted uh, Piney Green Road. And everything behind those lots basically remained in the county-wide or in the county jurisdiction. So that's another area that uh, we're proposing that we, we remove from the ETJ. And uh, the next area is nearest the intersection of Piney Green Road and 24, um, the Bella Woods, uh, Piney Green Estates, and Winds Country Acres area. There's one slide that was not in the slideshow, and that's basically the area, and I apologize for that, in the basically the rain tree subdivision, the Deerfield subdivision, uh, those areas would be removed. The areas most immediately um, adjoin in front of Gum Branch Road, the ones that front Gum Branch Road would remain in the jurisdiction. Uh, so, but all the residential neighborhoods, Lordell, rain tree, um, Deerfield, and all the other sub subdivision names that are in there would come out. Let's see. So we've identified those areas and are asking the city council to consider removing these areas from the ETJ. And if this proposal is considered and approved by the city council tonight, uh, this would be the new city limit and the ETJ map. You can see the areas that are now dropped off have gone to white, and then the county would assign zoning to those areas tomorrow night. Um, and at this time, I'll be happy to answer any questions that uh, City Council may have. And uh, Dr. Woodruff may want to add something to the discussion. I'm not sure. Council, any questions of Mr. King? I, one, one more thing, Mayor. Uh, if you look on page 42, that will give you a better uh, view of the Rain Tree Deerfield area that didn't make it, for whatever reason, uh, into the PowerPoint. You can see the areas there better defined. In case there was any questions on the specific area there. The action of the City Council to establish the ETJ was taken at a time when the county did not have the zoning and land use control that they have today. In partnership with the county, I think it is always appropriate for us to ensure that our regulations and their regulations are in concert. Uh, I commend uh, Ben Warren and the folks at the County Planning Department for working with Ryan and the folks at our Planning Department to come up with a reasonable boundary. In keeping some of the areas for ETJ, 
we believe that that's in the best interest of the city from a number of standpoints. One is protecting the training mission. Two is having some control over the major corridors coming into the city. And three, potential annexation areas. I would also remind council there is nothing in the law that requires a party to go from unincorporated area to ETJ area to annexation area. For example, this past year the mayor and council received a petition from John Koenig to annex property that was not in the ETJ but rather was in the unincorporated area. The state law permits us to directly annex on a voluntary annexation basis property that is not in the ETJ. So this action does not in any way, in my opinion, impact the city's ability to grow. It recognizes the maturity of the county in a land use regulation standpoint. It continues to accomplish the goals that the mayor and council has. Comments, council? This time I'll recess the regular council meeting and open a public hearing that's required in this matter. Does anyone present that wishes to speak? If so, indicate by raising your hand. Yes, sir. If you would step forward, please, and give your uh, name and address. You need to come up to the uh, podium up here. Yes, sir. That'd be fine. My name is Charles Lindsay. I live at 106 Tanglewood, and uh, I believe I'm going to be in the area that's going to be included into the EMJ or excluded out? E excluded. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out. What, what does that mean for us? It means you're not going to be annexed and you're not going to be held to the city's zoning standards. I, I just won't be in the city zoning plan for its building structures. And you won't be. Okay. Yeah, from this point, Mr. Lindsay, from this point on, if council approves this, then your development, your house, your property will be under the jurisdiction of Onslow County government. You would not have any building permits from the city. You would not have any code enforcement issues from the city. You would strictly be under the unincorporated regulations of the county government. Okay. And, and as far as that's concerned, does it does this change my voting district or any no, of that? No, it's no, just it's no, just for planning purposes. This is only for planning purposes and future annexation. And for future annexation. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Mr. Williams. Uh, yes, David Williams, 109 Shadowbrook Drive. I believe uh, some of my properties are in the ETJ now, and if it helped me, I'd say keep it. Uh, but for some examples, there's a corner property down there where tree stuff has been allowed to be built up very high, higher than some of the property buildings I own. It's been sitting there for a year. The county won't do anything about it. Um, and it's in your ETJ and you can't do anything about it. So that doesn't help me. Um, if one of my mobile homes burnt down, I had to replace it. I'd have to now put a sidewalk in, I think, still under your rules. Um, you say you don't tax me. I would consider that a tax because it costs more to put the sidewalk in than my property's worth on some of it. Um, there's two roads down there in the Piney Green Estates area that have uh, Littleton is one of them that says 60 foot right away has been there since I think the 60s or 70s and uh, no one from the state county or the city has ever gone in to try to get that put in the state system and it's in really bad shape and it would qualify under I believe under the grandfather clause like uh, Lake Street did when we petitioned that years ago so uh, I don't see anywhere where you are helping me so uh, I hope you take us out of it. And uh, I'm going to just throw this in here. Um, you do, you're doing a real good job keeping your city clean, but then uh, I think somebody's blinked because check out Bell Fork Road again. The tree stuff has grown over the sidewalk in some areas. So the sidewalk is disappearing in some areas. You were doing a really, really good job of keeping that cleaned up. But this summer, I think it got away from you. And uh, um, I just thought I'd throw that in there since I was here. But uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. <clears throat> My
My name is Carl Sutton. I live 2132 Lake Street, Midway Park. I have more of a, a concern than, than anything else. Some time ago, as you know, they put a large uh, two uh, foot um, on Wassa, put a sewer system going down Lake Street. And it services some of the part of, uh, I believe, um, some of the other ETJ areas on Piney Green that goes to the base. So it's a main vein that goes right past my house. One of the ideas uh, back then, I remember, some of the fundings was that Bella Woods itself had a lot of problems with septic tanks. And, and that was one of the reasons why, that, from my understanding, they got the approval to do part of this. Now, we know, where the, we know where funds come from, big development, which uh, serves a lot of big developments uh, in the area. And the, the question I have is, at one time it was the, the county area, and Anwasa got involved, obviously, and they put the sewer system in. And then you had the ETJ, so you were part of the uh, system. Now it's going back to, or possibly going back to the county. And we really didn't get any farther going through this. And, and I see as we go back and forth, back and forth as a county or the city, are we ever going to help the people that need to be helped? So it's more of a concern, not a question. But uh, it just seems to me, by shifting back and forth, we're not getting anywhere. And um, that was just my observation. Yes, sir. So the concern was about the Bella Woods? The Bella Woods, uh, a lot of failing septic tanks. Um, and, and I don't live in Bella Woods, but I live near it. And um, the main line goes right, right. right in front of my house. And I can't hook up to it because it's the pressure line. There's no, um, and if the individual, like big developers, big developers spend a lot of money, they, they go ahead and put their systems in and hooks up, uh, hook up to it. And, but the individuals don't have that privilege because they don't have the money. And it's not worth it to, to one individual to do that. Uh, if three, four businesses got together, that'd be one thing. But we're talking about uh, residential now. I can, uh, if I can answer that question. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Bender and I sit on the Anwasa uh, board. And I think what we're talking about or what your concerns are will be addressed from an Onwasa standpoint. I understand. Those major arterials uh, going to the base and the new infrastructure that's being put in as part of the new uh, road widening will provide those capabilities to the residential areas as well as addressing the Bella Woods concern that you have. That's part of an o overall strategic plan for Onwasa to mitigate those uh, failing septic tanks in those areas. So you're going to see that capability uh, in the next uh, several years available to the homeowners that not on a mandatory, uh, not on a mandatory level, but uh, if they choose to uh, connect, that Understood. the capability will be there for that. <laughs> so it wouldn't matter if it's county or city. It's county doesn't have the uh, that those resources anymore now yes, it's all under on wasa at the county level the city does but uh, as part of that de-annexation we would not be bringing sewer into that area on the WASA, city wouldn't be the city wouldn't but on yes, is servicing that area uh, of piney green thank you very much sir. and i apologize for my telephone thank you mr <laughs> i know they get away from us sometimes anyone else wish to speak Yes, ma'am. If you give us your name and address, that would be most appreciative. My name is Dorothy Epstein. I live at 103 Tanglewood. Okay. I just moved here, <laughs> and uh, I have no idea what you're talking about. I just have a couple of questions. Will this change our addresses? No, no ma'am. Will still be Jacksonville? Still be yes, Jacksonville. And if I want to enlarge my house, I have to go to the county then yes, to get the permits? Yes, ma'am. Is that the... That's okay. correct. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Anybody else? All right, then. I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap up the public, close the public hearing in this matter. All right, Council, we're being asked to consider the uh, proposed ETJ amendment. Recommend approval of the EJ boundary amendment and associated amendments to the official zoning map. 
Second. A motion and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Okay, that brings us to our first session of public comment. I didn't have anyone sign up, but is anyone present wishing to speak at public comment? All right, that'll take us to agenda item number four. This is a Recreation and Parks Advisory Committee. Uh, this is a leadership development appointment. And uh, it says, currently there are no vacancies on the Recreation and Parks Advisory Committee. However, the city has a leadership development program, which provides additional opportunities for citizen service in a non-voting capacity. Uh, the, the advisory committees may have up to two leadership development members and the Recreation and Parks Advisory Committee has one vacancy for a leadership development member. So um, I'm gonna uh, ask uh, Council Member Jerome Willingham, who is the liaison to the Recreation and, and uh, Parks Advisory Committee, if he has any nominations for this position. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I nominate Samantha Turnley to the leadership development, uh, to be the leadership development member and serve a two-year term expiring on the 3rd of September, 2015. Any, are there any other nominations? Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we uh, close the nominations and accept Ms. Turnley by acclamation. Can I have a second? second. Any discussion? Here none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed? Agenda item number five is the Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee. And uh, this is uh, currently, there are no vacancies on the committee, but we do have, uh, as far as the leadership development program, we have, uh, we can have up to two, and we do have two vacancies uh, for leadership development members. Uh, Angela, uh, council member Angela Washington is the council liaison to the Environmental and Appearance Committee. And I'll ask you, Ms. Washington, if you have any nominations. Mr. Mayor, I nominate Ms. Sarah Holden as a leadership development member with a term to expire on September 3rd, 2015. Are there any other nominations? Move the nominations be closed and Mrs. Holden, Ms. Holden be elected by acclamation. Can I uh, get a second? Yeah. Second. Okay. All, right. All those in favor, is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. All right, council, that brings us to the uh, reports for the evening. And I'm going to start with Mr. Willingham. No report. Mr. Bittner? No report this evening. <clears throat> Mayor Pro Tem Lazaro. Well, I know you all miss me, so I do have a report. <laughs> we figure you have one. <laughs> um, <laughs> we had our uh, TAC meeting uh, last week, our Transportation Advisory Committee meeting, and just FYI, the, uh, the committee voted to um, remove what's known as U-4007 C and D. We took action to retract the corridor protection maps that were created in 2008 that identified two large interchanges to be constructed on Western Boulevard and Marine Boulevard and Marine Boulevard and Piney Green. Uh, these corridor maps were rejected by council in 2008 when we were asked to adopt them. But because uh, these were publicly published documents, um, they, they stayed intact and, and because of real estate laws, they have to be disclosed if there's any sale or um, anything going on with the properties that are underneath that, that, that map. Um, so this hampered several investment opportunities and property owners at these locations. So the TAC determined that the, uh, both the proposals were too expensive and had far too much impact on the community to be a reasonable investment of future public funding with the new strategic mobility formula. So uh, the retra uh, retraction of the corridor map takes two interchanges off the table, but the MPO is still working with NCO NCDOT on other more reasonable al alternatives to alleviate congestion. So. In summary, we, we voted to remove the corridor protection maps, 
but in essence those projects still remain a priority for us to mitigate um, congestion in the in the western and, and 17 area and I'll give you further information on that as that moves along also as part of the new strategic mobility formula uh, Gum Branch and uh, Gum Branch Road, Belfort Road, would not be eligible for higher level enhancements, and maintenance dollars uh, commensurate with the amount of traffic it carries every day that nearly reaches 30,000 at, at certain areas of Gum Branch Road per day. Um, and at the current at the current proposal at the division level, it would take probably four years worth of total funding to resurface that road. So it, it's a dramatic impact on the city's ability to utilize those funds. So we've supported a proposal to extend the NC241 designation from Beulahville into Jacksonville along Gum Branch Road, Bell Fork Road. Having an NC designation allows it to be uh, categorized in the regional level and that is what we're working towards. It's a different pool of money that will allow us to be able to maintain that road appropriately. So just a lot of logistical movements in the transportation department. I just wanted to make you aware of it. And we also adopted our uh, TIP amendment um, that uh, will also fully fund the Lejeune Trail in FY14 and move the widening of US 17 between Jacksonville and New Bern forward from uh, 2019 to 2015. Mm -hmm. Significant improvement. And that ends my report. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Washington. Yeah. Mr. Thomas. Uh, no report. Mr. Warden. I was going to give that report on, on <laughs> transportation. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bob. All right. No, no report, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the only thing I, I've got tonight, I do want to report that we conducted an annual evaluation for our attorney and city manager and uh, uh, I just want to see this demonstration of walking on water that you you guys can do <laughs> now I, I just want to report that the that it was a very glowing review of the performance of these two individuals and you know seeing how we've been constrained uh, money wise this year you know trying to conserve funds due to a, a few things uh, that were no fault of our own may I add uh, these two gentlemen uh, came into this meeting not even expecting and probably would have turned down any kind of increase that we would have offered. But uh, anyway, I just want to just say that uh, I've never seen any, two any more dedicated public servants uh, in my history of being in this public service for almost 40 years. Um, I think we're very fortunate to have two people, two people, uh, two senior staff members uh, of such high integrity and such high uh, regard uh, for the city of Jacksonville and dedication to duty. And I think that, you know, I know this is a public or, or personal personnel thing that we did here, but I think this shouldn't go unnoticed, you know, and I, in lieu of in lieu of a pay raise, I'm going to give you personal public uh, acknowledgement of the fine job that you do for this city. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Woodruff, you're on. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, thank you very much. Uh, John and I both could have gone a little bit longer if you hadn't used the word senior staff so many <laughs> times, though, Mayor. I mean, you know, just... We do, again, we, we appreciate, you know, we're very blessed to lead a dedicated city staff of 573 employees that you give us. They're definitely dedicated to public service. They are definitely dedicated to customer service, as you have seen the improvements the last several years. I could not uh, accept your comment without uh, publicly thanking Ron Massey and Glenn and Carmen for the work they do, along with John and leading this team. It's a privilege to work with you. I would remind the public that this has been a, uh, a, a week that is shortened for garbage collection. So if you put your garbage out today and it's still there because Tuesday is your normal day, just leave it there because tomorrow it will be picked up. The Thursday and Friday schedules will be normal and the next week we'll be back on a regular schedule for garbage, horticultural and recycling. We'd also remind the public that on September the 11th, we will be having Patriots Day ceremony. 
It will begin at 8.15 a.m. at the Memorial Gardens. We would encourage the public to attend. Also on September 19th, roughly two weeks away, at 3.30 p.m. in the afternoon, we will be having a groundbreaking ceremony for station number two, fire station number two. That groundbreaking will occur on site at Sandy and Gum Branch. And Mayor and Council, it's a privilege to work with you, and thank you for your dedicated service to this community. Thank you very much, Mr. Carr. Thank you, Mayor, for those kind remarks, and thank Council for all the kind remarks that you gave to me and uh, Dr. Woodruff in closed session. And most of all, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here with you and to work with Dr. Woodruff and our whole city team in serving our city and its citizens. It is a pleasure and an honor. Thank you. We've got a good team. We've got a great team. Anyway, with that said, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.